Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. I decided to buy a new MacBook Pro. Yeah, a little crazy. Still paying the last one off because it's only been like nine months since the M2 Max MacBook Pro came out. So I think I have two or three months left. Uh, the Apple 0% interest thing is something that I kind of take advantage of or fall victim to, whichever you prefer. But I decided to buy it. Uh, two reasons. One is just curiosity. I just want to know M3 Max versus M2 Max. Got to satisfy my curiosity as to where it stands. Another reason I bought it, which doesn't make any sense, and we'll get into that in just a minute. As you might know, I've been testing a series of about six or seven tests, very consistent for the last, oh, six, seven years. Uh, everything from the 2015 MacBook Pro all the way now to the M3 Max MacBook Pro. Now, I don't do what some of the other channels do and buy, you know, every version of every MacBook Pro. You know, I can't afford that. Uh, but I am curious about how one of the top end ones work. I don't think anybody that's a photographer will really need to upgrade if they've got an M1 Max or M2 Max, M2 Pro even. Uh, we're probably at the point that a regular M1 uh, Mac Book Pro, the M3 Max MacBook Pro probably would beat it by quite a bit, but I don't test those. But now at this point, I think we're past the point of the Intel 12 core Mac Pro that I've got. And so in this video, I'm gonna run the test, see where we stand compared to the M2 Max MacBook Pro. So let's get this one opened up and check it out and then we'll get on with the tests. Okay, here we go. You know, Apple's packaging engineers are probably pretty well paid too. They do a lot of uh, amazing things. That shipping box to me is like, wow. All right. And now you see what made me decide to buy the new one. I just had to have a black one. I tell you what, a lot of people say it isn't as black as they see it in the videos. Actually, it looks darker to me than what I've seen in the video. Now, if you get any light reflecting off of it, it looks a little light because you get the specular highlight reflection, but it's pretty dark. Very cool. So let's get, uh, get it set up, run some tests. I'll be back in a week or two after I've run all my tests on it, and we'll just see how it stacks up. Okay, I'm back. The tests take quite a bit of time to do, and I ran them multiple times. I even ran a few on the M2 Max before I sold it, just to kind of make sure my base points are correct. Let's get right into the setup here. I'm running Sonoma 14.1.2 and Lightroom Classic 13.0.1. This is being filmed first part of December 2023. We're on Photoshop 2024 version 25.2, and I'm going to use ScreenFlow 10.0.10 .10 for the video compression test, the one I added last time. The four machines are involved, and I'm going to put the 2019 Mac Pro as the base still. When I mentioned in my original video with the M1, my goal was to get a laptop or portable that was as fast or close to the Mac Pro. At this point, the 23M3 Max is beating the Mac Pro, I believe, in every test. Even the other one did, and the M1 Max was certainly adequate. I'm doing the M Series Max of each one. I have the M1 Max, M2 Max, and M3 Max showing. Main difference in this test from the last one is the M3 Max is now a 16-core GPU. CPU, excuse me, and a 40 core GPU versus the 12 core and 38 core of the M2. You can pause this if you want to look at the details a little more. If you're curious how I actually time these tests, it's pretty simple. I run Lightroom by itself or Photoshop by itself, and I actually have a little camera that videos it. Then I take that video clip and I can edit it right to where the open button disappears and right where the progress indicator disappears. So I can get pretty precise within a second or two of how long it takes to run the test. 
So I'm going to start off with just giving you the numbers right away. These are the three M1, M2, M3 Max compared to each other with my tests. You can see the name of the tests on the side. I've got make previews, export, a Puget Systems Photoshop test, and then a screen flow test. You can just look at the numbers. You can see that we've made about the same amount of improvement from the M2 to the M3 that we did from the M1 to the M2. What I'm gonna do now is actually go through each of these tests, talk about how the test was done, and give you the numbers more in detail. But I wanna do this because maybe you don't wanna watch the whole video. If you are interested in the specifics of the test, especially the Puget System test where it breaks down actual tasks such as content aware fill, then hang on and watch the rest. First test is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna import 500 Sony A7R4 files so we have something to work with. When I do this, I have the preview set to embedded in sidecar. That's the fastest way to get them onto your hard drive. The files are actually on an external SSD. And the only reason I'm doing that is that I've got the same SSD that I've had for all of the tests. It's not a real realistic test because to do it from an actual SD card, even a fast one, takes, I don't know, 10 times longer. But this just gives us a comparison. And as you can see, all of these machines are right around 30 seconds. Even from an SD card, you're not gonna save you know, more than about three or 4% of your time. So this test is a little bit irrelevant. They're all fast. And really the limit here is the ability to read the data off of the drive. So test two, we're gonna make one-to-one -one previews of those. Certainly I could have done that on the import, but I wanted to make this an individual test. That's actually what I usually do is import and have it make one-to-one -one previews at the same time, especially now that one-to-one -one previews are made so quickly. Now, the only reason I do that is I wanna be able to quickly check focus while I'm in the library module without having to wait for a one-to-one -one preview to be built. I am working with pretty large files most of the time. 100 megapixels GFX is currently my camera of choice. I still have my 150 megapixel phase one, which I might use occasionally on my little view camera. Anyway, as you can see, this test has uh, gotten better. The M3 Max does this in about 60, 70% of the time as the other machines. So it's saving what, 30, 35, 40%. I don't know how to calculate those. Just look at the graph and it's, you know, you're saving about a minute and a half in a five minute process. So that's pretty significant. Okay, for the third test, we're actually going to export all of those 500 files. We're not gonna make any changes in the develop module, so all Lightroom has to do is resize them to 4,000 pixels on the long side and then compress them to a JPEG 60. And as you can see, this task doesn't take very long, but the bottom line is we're going from two minutes and one second on the M2 down to a minute and 16 seconds on the M3. So that's about a 50% savings or a little better than 50% savings in time. It's doing it in not quite half the time. So it's not an insignificant. If you're having to export a lot of files, then this might be something you wanna consider. Now, one thing I will mention is the first time I did this test, it took over five minutes. And I found out I had to reinstall Lightroom to clear something out. I don't know what it was. Have a whole video about that. Something that you might want to look at if your Lightroom exports seem a little sluggish. I'll link it up in the corner and in the description below. Anyway, let's get on to test four. So test four, we're going to push the computer a little harder. We've taken all of those files. The very first file, I have an XMP sidecar file that I import, which has about 10 dust spots, two graduated filters, and several global changes in the develop module. So when we export those, Lightroom has to render all of those changes in there. It does take considerably longer. As you can see on the older machine, seven minutes on the Mac Pro, we got it down to six minutes and 44 seconds on the M2, so it was slightly better. Now we're down to five minutes and 45 seconds. So we're saving about, I don't know, 18% of the time. If you export a lot of files, again, this might be something to consider. It'll save you a little bit of time. So in the next test, I have five panoramas I'm going to merge in batch mode. They are from a phase one IQ 180, which is an 80 megapixel digital back. And each of the panels varies from six to 12 exposures. And in the older machines, you'll see that the M series processors was much more efficient at this than the Intel Mac Pro. But what we see now with the 2023 M3 Max MacBook Pro, we're really virtually identical. So now to move to Photoshop. For Photoshop, I've used a benchmark made by Puget Systems. Uh, these guys build high, high-end Windows machines specifically for Adobe products, Photoshop, uh, Premiere, other ones like that. And they developed this benchmark to just compare their various machines as well as stock machines. Now, 
I don't know, I haven't seen an update in that. And I had trouble getting this, the recent version of this to run on the M series of processors. I've just kind of settled on version eight because that's what all of my old machines, 2015, 2017, 2019 MacBook Pros were using. And it works just fine because all this is is a set of actions. What it does is do 21 different actions within Photoshop and it repeats it three times to give the average. And according to that test, we've made some significant steps in Photoshop, both with the M series and with the newer machines. Uh, the Mac Pro took 31 minutes and we're down to 17 minutes. If you compare that to the M2, it's about two minutes faster, a little over two minutes faster, so a little over 10% faster. Not a huge savings. And I will say that this probably is pretty insignificant for most users of Photoshop. There are some things that are quite a bit faster. We'll get to that in just a minute. What I will say is when you're working in Photoshop, typically if you don't see a dialog box, things are happening instantly. And at this point, most of the time you're in Photoshop is the program waiting on you to tell it what to do. When you actually perform an action, it's usually pretty instantaneous. The only time you see a real big savings in time is if you're running some serious actions, which is what this program does. Now, one thing I have been able to test is some of the AI features. I don't know if this will help because I think most of AI work is done in the cloud somewhere. And so it's not your machine speed or power, it's more about your internet connection as far as the timing. But anyway, it is uh, performing Photoshop uh, much faster. Now Puget Bench actually assigns a score like most other benchmarks and this is where you can kind of see where they rate the capability. The 2019 Mac Pro at 784 versus 1577 for the new one. Uh, that's almost you know, twice as fast or twice as good. I don't know if it has anything to do with speed, but it's significant. And if you compare this to some of their high-end machines, it, it holds its own right there. I haven't looked lately, but as you can see, each M M series of processors, the Max versions have made fairly decent increases in capability in Photoshop. So the Puget uh, Bench breaks down several categories and gives kind of summary results as well. And you'll notice that it's rating the benchmark for the GPU score slightly better on the M2, which surprised me a little bit. On the overall score, the M3 Max comes out a little bit ahead as it does on the filter score. And of course, on the photo merge score, what's interesting is it comes out ahead. And yet, I'm not sure how it's rating this because when I do photo merges in Lightroom, I'm getting the same amount of time. So apparently something works a little different in Photoshop and the merges are faster. If you're doing Photoshop merges, panel merges, then the M3 probably will save you a little bit of time. Here I've broken down the difference between the M1, M2, and M3 based on the actual individual tests. You'll notice that most of them are about the same. You'll see that the M3 has about a 10%, 15% gain on most functions. As I said, most of these, you're not gonna notice the difference because a three second versus a four second content aware fill, you're really not gonna notice. Now, if you're doing much more complicated stuff, of course that might, you know, if you're doing a content aware fill that takes 40 seconds, suddenly it takes 30. So it kind of depends on your workflow, but I think for most people, we're not seeing a lot of changes here. And so I'm not sure that Photoshop is gonna justify much of an upgrade. Here are a few other things, and here again, you can see that on the individual tests that were just slight, slightly improved on all of the, these functions. So let's just compare now a screen flow compression. This is a 30 minute screen flow video with multiple layers, lots of HDMI video. But as you can see, I can compress that video from 943 all the way down to 733. So that's a 25% savings in time, not insignificant if you're doing a lot of video compression. I think you'll find compressor, uh, Premiere, Final Cut Pro. Well, I don't know about Premiere, but Final Cut Pro, I think you'll see there's quite a bit of savings in those kind of tools. So if you're doing quite a bit of video work as well, you might find a lot of times, you know, two, three minutes, four or five minutes. I mean, if this is a super complicated Final Cut Pro script, it might be significant and worth considering whether you should upgrade or not. So just for the heck of it, what I do is add up how long it takes to run all the tests together. And as you can see, what takes an hour and four minutes on the Mac Pro has gradually gotten better. And now we're down to 35 minutes and 34 seconds. It's taking about 15 to 20% less time on the M3 Max than it did the M2 Max MacBook Pro. Well, there you have it. A lot of fun to run those tests. It looks like the M3 is a solid upgrade speed-wise. There are some things going on with the thermals and the way the machine cools. And 
I might do a video on that because I noticed it, especially on the exporting of the files that have been modified tests, uh, seems like it ramps up and the fans don't kick on quite as early. So then they have to kick up and they're actually louder. So there might be some issues going there. There's a few other people that have done videos on that. But it's a solid upgrade. It's definitely a 15, 20% faster machine on a lot of different tests. The challenge is if you're doing a lot of Photoshop work, you might not notice it at all because Photoshop is pretty much instantaneous on almost everything you do. But if you're considering whether you should upgrade, if you have an M1, M1 Pro, maybe M1 Max, I think this is a pretty solid upgrade. If you have an M2, maybe M2 Pro, M2 Max, I think you're going to enjoy the speed, but I don't think it's going to be significant. Now, if you're still running on an Intel MacBook Pro, I think you're definitely going to notice the difference in a lot of different functions. Content Aware Fill is substantially faster on the M series of processors and other things like that. So if you're still running on an Intel, maybe it's time to break down. I think you'd find that even, even the M3 Pro would be pretty successful. Maybe even the M3. Unfortunately, I'm not going to test any of those because I just can't afford to. And so that's speculation on my part. I am making a video now that's going to compare MacBook Pro starting in 2015 going forward just to see how the processing power for photographers using Lightroom, Photoshop has improved over the years. And we've got some significant changes. Making one-to-one -one previews, for example, is so much faster now. And a lot of things are becoming instantaneous where it used to be you'd get a little dialog box. Uh, now pretty much there's no progress bars involved in a lot of the things inside of Photoshop because it only takes two or three seconds versus 10 to 15 seconds. Anyway, watch for that video sometime in the next month or so. If you have any questions, let me know. Until next time, see ya.